Google Analytics 4 is the latest version of this popular analytics tool. And in this video, I will show you how to install it in two ways. One is with Google Tag Manager and the other one is with GTag. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to the Analytics Mania YouTube channel where you can learn Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. So if you want to stay up to date with GE4, then consider subscribing to this channel. So if you want to install Google Analytics 4 on your website, the process is very straightforward. You have two options. Either install Google Tag Manager first and then implement GA4 with Google Tag Manager. That's what I prefer at least. Or you can pick the default tracking code library called gtag.js. Usually developers are responsible for working with gtag. To install Google Analytics 4, first you will need to create a Google Analytics 4 property. So if you haven't done that yet, then log in to any Google Analytics property you have. Then go to the admin in the bottom left corner and then click create property. Here you should enter the property name, for example, the name of the website, then select reporting time zone, select your currency. If you also want to create a universal analytics property, then you should click show advanced options and then click this toggle switch and enter all the information that you're asked to enter right here. And when you do that, you will need to click next, answer several questions and then create a property. But since I already have one, then I will just keep using that. When you create a GA4 property, you will be probably redirected to the data streams section that looks something like this. And if you're not redirected, then you will need to go to the admin and then in the property column, select data streams and create a new web data stream if you don't see anything right here. If you already see a website data stream with this icon or something similar, then it means that you already have one, so keep using it. But if on the other hand, you don't have a web property, you will need to click add stream web and then enter the URL of your website and the name of the stream, which can also be just the name of the website. Data stream in this context is a source of data from which your Google Analytics for property will start getting information. So when you create a data stream, you should click on it and then you will see something like this. This is your measurement ID and we will need to use that a bit later in this video. But in the tagging instructions section right here, you will see two options. One is to use gtag.js. When you choose this option, it means that you will need to add or your developer will need to add this kind of code to all the pages of your website. And the other option is to use Google Tag Manager. In this video, I will explain both options. So let's start with the gtag.js. Personally, I always choose the Google Tag Manager option, but some businesses prefer working with the plain JavaScript codes in their source code of the website. So let's copy this code. You can do that by highlighting all the code and then doing the right click copy or just copy this. And then you should go to the content management system of your website and make sure that this code is added to the head of the website of all pages of the site. It's very important that all pages would contain this code. Otherwise, this code will work only on those pages where you implement. So if for some reason you don't add this code to half of your pages, then it means that you will lose half of your data. Keep in mind that there are many different content management systems, many different websites that are coded in different ways. So there is no one universal way of how to add the code to the site. In this case, I'm using just one demo website, but in your case, you might see something different because maybe your system is using something different. When you add the code, you should click save and that's it, the code is added. So now we can test whether this is working properly. And you can do that by going to the website, then to debug this, you should install a Google Analytics debugger extension. I will post a link to that extension below the video. So when you install it, you should click on its icon so that it will become turned on. And this batch shows that. When GA debugger is enabled, then you can go to analytics, then configure, then debug view. And here you should start seeing some events. For example, here I have refreshed the page twice. So I get two page view events. You can click on that event and you can see the location on which that tracking code fired. Then I can go to another page, which is slash pages slash contact. And if I go back to the debug view and close this, I should expect to get a new page view. And here is that page view event. If I click it and go to page location, here is the page of the URL that I'm currently on. 
Also, if I interact with this page, for example, I scroll to the bottom, then I might click some outbound links, for example, this one, then in the debug view, I should expect to get more events because Google Analytics is capable of tracking more events. For example, here's the scroll event that has the parameter percent scrolled 90%. So it means that I have reached almost the end of the page. And also I have an event click, which means that there was an outbound link click. Outbound link click means that I clicked a link that opened a different website that belongs to a different domain. And this is the link that I clicked, which is my other website, basically my main website. So that is how you can install Google Analytics 4 on your website. Another option that I usually prefer is by using Google Tag Manager. So first let's remove this gtag.js code snippet, click save, and then let's take a look how can we do that in GTM. If you are new to Google Tag Manager, basically it is a platform that allows you to manage tracking codes in a single place. What it means is that after you install Google Tag Manager on your website, then you can add various tracking codes. For example, you can add Google Analytics 4, you can add Google Ads tracking, and you can configure when exactly those tracking codes should be fired. Should they be fired on all pages, or maybe when someone downloads your ebook, or maybe someone makes a purchase, and so on. Instead of having to work directly with the code and manage tracking codes all over the place, you are having all your tracking codes in a single place. If you have no experience with GTM, then I have a pretty extensive tutorial for beginners, and you will find the link to it below the video. To get started with Google Tag Manager, you have to go to tagmanager.google.com, and then you will be asked to create a new container. Or you might see a view that looks something like this. In any way, you will need to click Create Account. If you're just starting with Google Tag Manager, then enter your company name, then select your country, and then create a container. A container is basically a place where you hold all of your tracking codes for that particular website. So here you can enter the name of your website or the address of your website, and then make sure to select the web container. When you create the container, you will see a view that looks something like this or like this. So Google Tag Manager is asking you to add these two codes to the website. This should be added to the head of the website and this one is required. The second one is optional and it should be added after the opening body tag in your website's HTML. If you're seeing a view, something like this, and you want to get that container code, you can get it by clicking on your container ID right here. So either add these codes to the website yourself or send these codes to your developer. Once your Google Tag Manager container is installed, now it's time to use it to install Google Analytics on your website. Because now Google Tag Manager is like a middleman between your website and your tracking codes. So let's go to Tags, New, and then create a tag. Tag consists of two parts. One is what should this tag do? In our case, that is to activate Google Analytics 4 on our website. So click anywhere on this tag configuration section and then select GA4 configuration. Here we have to paste the measurement ID because Google Tag Manager must know to which exact property do we want to send the data. And we can get that measurement ID by going to Google Analytics, Admin, then Data Streams, and select your web data stream. Here we have the measurement ID. Click this to copy or just highlight this and copy, and then go to Google Tag Manager to paste it. For the basic setup, that is it. Now the triggering part. When do we want to activate this tracking code? Based on Google's requirements, we should add this to all the pages of our website. So click anywhere on triggering and then select all pages. In this case, all pages means all pages where Google Tag Manager container is installed. Now let's go and name this tag. I usually name it like that. G4 config and then measurement ID. Click save. Now it's time for us to test whether this is working properly. To do that, you should click the preview button in the top right corner, then a new tab will open and here you should enter the URL of your website. Click connect. Now a new tab or a new window will open where you will see your website and you should also see a badge that says that Tag Assistant is connected. The same connected should be visible in this tab. Now you can go to another page of your website and you see that the Tag Assistant is still connected. Let's go back to this tab and since we selected all pages, it also means all container loaded events. And here on the left side, we see all the events that happened on a page and Google Tag Manager was able to track that. 
If you want to test a tag that is configured to fire on all pages, you must check all container loaded events. So click this first one and here we see that our GA4 configuration tag has fired. It has fired successfully. Now, if I click on another container loaded, because that happened on another page, we see that the tag still fired properly. Now let's go to Google Analytics, then configure and debug view. Here we can see events that were automatically tracked by Google Analytics. Let's click the first page view and that happened on our homepage and this parameter is added by the preview mode of Google Tag Manager. Then if I click another page view, we will see that here I am on a blogs slash news, which is this current page. And if I went to another page, let's say to catalog, which is collection slash all, I should expect to see that event here as well. And here's that event, I will click it and its location is slash collections slash all. So it looks like everything is working properly. Now you need to go to Google Tag Manager and publish these changes live. And you can do that by clicking the submit button in the top right corner, then enter something like GA4 installed and click publish. And that's it. A new version of the container was created and these changes went live. So now Google Analytics 4 is tracking your website visitors. After you install Google Analytics 4, within the next 24 hours, you will start seeing your event data not only in the debug view, but also in other sections. For example, configure and events. Just make sure that you have selected the correct date right here. Then you will also see some data in reports. For example, reports, engagement, and events. Here you will see some events like page view, user engagement, scroll, and so on. Then if you want to see just the page view data, then go to pages and screens. And that is pretty much it. You have now successfully installed Google Analytics 4. And that is how you can install Google Analytics 4 on your website. Personally, I prefer using Google Tag Manager because it gives me more flexibility and allows me to install not only GA, but other marketing and analytics tools. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4, then consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you